Hi, everybody. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on what time zone you are in. My name is Johnny Dabrowski, and I'm consultant at EarthDay.org, where I'm coordinating the works of Climate Education Coalition, which we as EarthDay.org have created together with more than 100 organizations and individuals at COP27 in Egypt. The goal of Climate Education Coalition campaign is to bring climate education and quality education to the negotiations table at COP28. We are demanding that all ministers of education and heads of state commit to introducing climate education to the curricula at COP28. As Climate Education Coalition in our countries and in our cities and in our regions, we are calling on the governments and private sector and the United Nations to invest in educating youth and adults about climate change and the role each one of us can play in solving climate crisis. We are inviting COP28 presidency to collaborate with the civil society represented by the Climate Education Coalition so that together we can make climate education the priority for COP28 in Dubai this year. Inspired by the words of President Nelson Mandela, that education is the most powerful weapon with which you can change the world. We want to change the world of today with education about climate. The truth is that climate crisis and biodiversity crisis will not be affecting us in 40 or 50 years. The truth is that climate change, which we as human beings have created, is destroying agriculture, infrastructure, and is affecting economies around the world right now. Floods, hurricanes, droughts, energy cuts, extreme winters and extreme summers are not just weather events. They are plagues that deprive people of their properties, homes, hopes and lives. We can get the world to carbon neutrality by 2050. And yes, we are able to eliminate oil and gas from energy sources by 2050. And we are in capability of transforming our, our, edu our production so that it's based on nature and it doesn't kill nature. But we can only do so if we do it together as cities, as countries, as companies, as organizations, as the world. We don't need to think the same, believe in the same religions or be in the same culture. It's not about that, but we need to share the same goal. Whether you live on Washington 1600 Pennsylvania yeah, yeah. Avenue or in Village to to Kilimanjaro. To go in the same direction, we need to be prepared. We need to be educated. The foundation of any new green invention or green policy is in education. And the foundation of education is in commitment of the teachers and in funding. That's why our aim is to push the governments, private sector and the United Nations to allocate funds for climate education and quality education around the world. To invest in teachers, in building schools, in preparing people for the green jobs, all that in order to create civic engaged societies that can jointly transform the economies from anti-nature to pro-nature, our energy systems from dependent to self-reliant and to reverse the human influence for the climate system from heading to a disaster to getting back to the greenhouse gas levels from before the 19th century industrial revolution. Climate education is what brought us here together. It is what influenced you to watch this event. And it inspires people to what 
we as the world so desperately need to take action. I would like to welcome you at the official event of presenting the open letter from Climate Education Coalition to the COP28 Presidency. It is the first ever global petition aiming to prioritize climate education at COP28. It is the first such petition which is addressed to the COP28 Presidency of the United Arab Emirates. And I'm very, very happy that we can share this historic moment together. First, we are going to present you the content of the open letter to the COP28 Presidency. It's going to be read by the most active individuals in our coalition, by Stacey Alvarez and Angela Oluva. And we're also inviting you all to sign this letter at earthday.org website or by clicking on the link attached to the description of this event. Your support is crucial for the success of our campaign. And after that, uh, we're going to have questions and answers with the most active organizations in the Climate Education Coalition, which are Climate Science, Learning Plant Institute Paris, Echo House Organization, Fridays for Future Climate Education Team, and World Organization of the Scout Movement. Also, you will be able to get acknowledged with our campaign and how you can join. Um, meanwhile, in our event, and additionally, we have invited a very special guest to give her remarks on climate education and its role in shaping the future of green economies. And before we read the open letter, I would like to invite our special guest, world-renowned climate leader and advocate. She has influenced the global climate agreements, including the Paris Accord, and was the most important. She has been the first NGO CEO to push for climate education on the international agenda. Please welcome EarthDay.org President Kathleen Rogers. Greetings, everyone. My name is Kathleen Rogers, and I'm president of EarthDay.org. I want to congratulate you for many, many things. First of, call, of course, is the preparation and announcement of this letter and the campaign education for Earth. Um, EarthDay.org has been in the environmental business since 1970 when the first Earth Day occurred. In fact, the first law that was passed after Earth Day when 20 million people came out on the streets was the National Environmental Education Act, which is hard to believe, given there isn't a single country on Earth, more or less, that is really educating their students for the 21st century, for the green economy, and to save the planet. Not until you. EarthDay.org started, restarted this campaign uh, about four years ago, but it really wasn't until the youth groups entered the picture. And there's so many people on this call I'd like to congratulate for their help, for their wisdom, way beyond their years, for their ideas. But now this education campaign, Education for Earth, is really picking up steam. Not only did we make progress at the last COP, but now with the open letter, I think that with your leadership, we will make significantly more progress and perhaps even have education as a negotiating item at the next COP. Now, it really wouldn't be without your efforts, and we are here to support you. Earth Day has committed to making climate literacy for all, particularly with its connection to civic skill, skill building, connection with unions, connection with teachers, connections with jobs of the future and jobs of today, and equity above all. And we are here standing ready to help you. We have gathered almost 400 million signatures some of you uh, will be with us as we are in Europe encouraging the British government, the EU, the EC, UNESCO, and others to take up this uh, campaign and make it their own and work with us and support us, but not overwhelm us. And I've always said, if you want to end up in the middle, you don't start there. So asking for the moon is exactly what we should be asking for. And I think you've done that in the open letter. And I'm hoping, and I actually believe that with your leadership, we can make almost everything in that letter a reality in very short order. So again, congratulations to you all. 
birthday stands ready to serve your interests, serve your campaign, support what you're doing. And we're very, very grateful for your leadership. Take care and thank you. And now I would like to invite Stacy Alvarez and Angela Oluva to read the open letter to the COP28 presidency, which aims at prioritizing climate education at COP28. Stacy, Angela. As the Climate Education Coalition, established on the 10th of November 2022 at COP27, and representing over 100 organizations and individuals, we are calling upon the COP28 UAE presidency and every UN member state to cooperate with us in order to highlight universal climate education as a crucial aspect of combating the climate crisis. In alignment with the targets of SDG 4, SDG 13, Article 12 of the Paris Agreement, Article 26 of the UN Declaration of Human Rights and UNESCO ESD program, we are demanding effective and consistent collaborative actions from the COP28 UAE Presidency and the Ministers of Education and Environment from UN member states to ensure the establishment of quality education for children, youth and adults to tackle the climate crisis worldwide along with necessary planning, funding and implementation. As the Climate Education Coalition, we are asking A, the COP28 presidency to, number one, establish climate education as one of the focal points of negotiations. Number two, encourage member states to sign the Glasgow Declaration for Climate Education. Number three, urge the heads of state attending the World Leader Summit at COP28 to commit to assessing and fully integrating K-12 climate education into the national curricula with an emphasis on building civics, skills, fostering entrepreneurship and creating jobs and pledge to allocate funds for this purpose. Number four, organize a high level ministerial session to highlight the significance of climate education. And number five, include a thematic day dedicated to climate education at COP28. The Ministers of Education and Environment from the UN Member States to 1. Include detailed education about the origins, processing, consequences and solutions of the climate crisis with an emphasis on building related civic skills, entrepreneurship and employment opportunities in the national curricula. 2. Ensure proper steps are taken to mobilize educative programs with the goal of empowering young generations and vulnerable communities with necessary tools to tackle climate change. As a climate education coalition, we are pledging our willingness to collaborate with national and international global establishments of the COP28 UAE presidency and the UN member states in order to effectively execute the mission stated above. With the aim of ensuring impacting climate education for everyone, Climate Education Coalition. As a member of the Climate Education Coalition, I am calling on COP28 Presidency and all Ministers of Education of the UN Member States to prioritize climate education at COP28. We need to educate at schools, universities, governments about the social, economic and environmental crisis that climate change is causing. And also implement climate education to the national curricula worldwide. And also climate change affects us all and it's essential to understand the issue so we can take action. The climate education is not only important for empowering the youth, but providing the tools necessary for people to make wise decisions around the solutions for solving climate change. Climate education provides the empowerment that's required for better negotiations that are well contextualized and for designing preventive strategies that are really effective. I believe that climate education is the one most powerful tool we can use to change the world of the day. Because we do believe this is the only way to bring to light our visions and success. Thank you. I believe that climate education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the way we relate to nature and the environment towards more friendly and sustainable ways. I believe 
that climate education is the most powerful weapon we can use to change the world of today. Climate education is a fundamental human right, especially for the most impacted communities. Okay, and now I would like to invite our panelists for the Q&A. I would like to invite the representatives of uh, Climate Science Learning Plant Institute Paris, uh, Fridays for Future Climate Education, Echo House, and the World Organization of the Scout Movement. Um, I would like for each one of you to give a short introduction about yourselves, um, to say um, what your organizations are doing and um, what uh, what is your mission in COP um, in, in the Climate Education Coalition. So I'm just going to go down the list of your names. So, um, Hannah. Hi everyone, good to meet you all. Uh, my name is Hannah Graham and I am the Manager for Advocacy and Partnerships at the World Organization of the Scout Movement. Um, most, of, most of you have heard of the Scouts, so Scouting is a global youth movement that builds friendships, experiences, skills for life. It shapes young people's futures as active citizens and more than 500 young people and adults have joined and experienced the power of Scouting since 1907. We're really, really proud to be part of the Climate Education Coalition. We know that we can only achieve climate education equity by working alongside others and that's what we're doing here today. Thank you, Hannah. Edward. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, absolutely privileged to be uh, alongside such, a, such an inspiring, action-driven uh, collection of partners, not just here, but in the wider Climate Education Coalition. My name's Ed Stevenette. I'm an Education Programme Manager with the Learning Planet Institute, which at the base was set up to bring together the different sciences and learn towards social impact and addressing global challenges. Um, and as part of this, we've been working on building wider alliances through through our wider alliance of uh, called Learning Planet for Transforming Education. And uh, we're really keen to be able to bring in more and more ways of uh, using learning, collective intelligence, learning uh, ecosystems as well to tackle the fundamental challenges faced by climate change. Thank you, education. Eva. Hey, everyone. My name is Eva Panikolaki. I'm a 20 years old activist from Greece. Um, I'm active with Fridays for Future Climate Education, and I'm very glad to be here in this coalition. I really believe in this venture. Thank you, Eva. Uh, Michael? Hi, thanks, Johnny. Um, I'm Michael. I'm the president of Climate Science. And if you've ever faced difficulty in learning about climate change, or you've gone to the IPCC reports and you find it too difficult, um, we are doing something about it. Climate science is transforming scientific content into education, digital resources that anyone anywhere could understand and access with a digital uh, device. And we're very proud of being a part of the Climate Education Coalition because, as I like to say, we can't solve the, we can't solve the climate crisis in a world that believes it's caused by plastic. Thank you, Michael. Mary. Thanks, Johnny. Hi, everyone. Um, well, I'm Mary. I'm the head of the Education for Sustainability Department at EcoHouse Global. EcoHouse is um, a nonprofit organization that promotes action for sustainability through education, through politics, communication, consultancy, and restoration of ecosystems, too. Uh, we have different areas and we do a lot of work, but basically, Everything we do is related to education because we believe it's the, the truly motor for change, for the deep change that we need to see in the world. And so we're so happy to be part of this coalition and be participating at this event. Thank you, Maria. And um, I would like to invite you all for a Q&A with each other. Uh, so our guests, as you can see, uh, we have the climate education leaders um, who are in the regions influencing education systems, influencing society, teaching society. Um, also, um, in the regions where climate change might not be in schools. 
Um, so I would like to start with uh, Michael from Climate Science. Uh, Michael, if you could tell us, first of all, how youth can educate themselves about climate change, um, especially in the situations where in the most countries in the world, uh, in times of climate crisis, we do not have education about climate. How young people can get, you know, professional information um, that can that they can rely on um, about climate change and what they can do um, to help solve the climate crisis. Um, well, Johnny, the world has a rich history in changing very fast. And today, everything is changing much faster than ever before. This means a couple of things. One, this means that we're going to have a lot more problems. Uh, the rate of problems that are going to arise is going to be much faster because we're discovering new things. And two, we need solutions to address these uh, problems a lot faster than ever before. And the way that the world has changed is not by waiting around and hoping someone else does something about it, but it's to take the task into your own hands. And if we look at whatever change that has happened in the world, that's how it happens. That's how it goes. So how can youth contribute to solving climate change? How can youth learn about climate education? Um, if you are one of those people who has an access to a phone or a computer, or an internet, um, you have the world's information at your fingertips. If you take your entire lifetime, and honestly, if you take 10 people's entire life, lifetime, you will never be able to read all of the information that is out there. There is more information uh, on the internet than anyone could ever possibly read, which also means all of the answers are there to be found. Now, what this Climate Education Coalition is for and what hopefully would be able to achieve is would be able to make this information a lot more easily accessible and faster to be reached in order to accelerate the and catalyze the rate that we need the solutions to come from. In the end of the day, education is fundamentally and by definition our ability to make better decisions. Thank you very much, Michael. I remember this quote, which was that um, people who think the same as other people are this one group and the other people who don't think the same as the other group and all progress relies on this, this other group who don't think the same who actually, as you said, take take responsibility, I think is the good word um, in their own hands. And I'm very happy to, I'm very happy to be with such people today on the panel. Um, next, I would like to ask Mary from EcoHouse, uh, if you could tell us about uh, the informal education and its influence on youth and societies. And also in, in, the, in the, your region, if you could say how you as EcoHouse help um, teach people about climate change um, and also how you are, I think, developing this connection with the environment uh, and the people. Thank you. That's a very, very nice question. Actually, at least here in Argentina, where we are based in, um, civil society and informal education is a necessary step to push environmental education and climate education into the formal system. Um, we need people, just common people, to want climate education so that we can have it at schools, at universities, and informal spaces. And so what we did in Argentina, at least, and hopefully this will, will be an inspiration for other countries if you don't have it, we, we started working on a law that uh, enabled every school and every university to have in the curriculum um, the climate education, environmental education. 
that took a lot of time. <laughs> it's not very easy, as you probably would know. It took more or less, yeah, more than five years. And we needed to gather together, just like we are doing here today. We did the same thing in Argentina. We formed a big, big group. Uh, coalition of, of edit or organizations that were dedicated to education and to environmental education and climate education. And we all pushed together, together with schools, together with parents, together with uh, teachers, everyone asking for um, climate education to get into the formal. So you need to get the people empowered to, to do that. And how do you do that? Well, through the informal education system, through the organization, through the civil society. Um, and that's why we, we started creating our own programs together, working with our organizations and putting all of the resources available for teachers and students and for neighbors in general to read about them, just what, what Michael was saying, to read about, to get to know uh, what's happening, what they can do about it. Um, we developed uh, a network of schools for sustainable education that's free and every school in the country can join and then they can access to all of these resources and workshops and teacher trainings um, uh, on a parallel system, let's say. It's not provided by the government, it's provided by civil society organizations such as us, and such as all of us. Um, and so it's, it's very important that climate education comes from society to society in order to go from the informal to the formal, but they, they are not, they do not compete. They actually complement it themselves. Uh, they are necessary and they depend on each other. So I, I think it's really, really crucial that we as, as organizations, as an coalition, we keep pushing for this to happen and um, keep moving forward. Thank you, Mary. I totally agree. Um, from from what I see from both your speeches is that there is some limit. There is the ceiling of the well of the governments who, uh, by some reason, don't allow climate education to the education systems. Uh, we can also see huge campaigns by the fossil fuel industry to misinform people to tell them that climate change doesn't exist. Of course, it does. And I also think that fighting for climate education is also, you know, having your influence in this fight of misinformation, which is spread by the fossil fuel industry. And we come on the other hand, we want to spread what is the truth. Uh, well, it's a hard truth, but this is what we're facing. And um, I would like to ask Ed, as you're presenting an educational institution, Learning Planet Institute, um, how you are approaching this and also how does climate education influence climate advocates and also what's the role of education in mobilizing climate action? Because maybe that's the thing that governments are so, well, so scared of. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree. I mean, fundamentally, from our perspective, we believe that, you know, education needs to be centered on on training and equipping game changers broadly. So, you know, people that are there and that have the tools to change the rules of the game. Um, you know, sometimes that the, this is really the systems that are not working. And as we know, you know, this is this is especially the case um, with the climate crisis. Uh, it's also well known that there are very few um, national climate education curriculums. Uh, from our perspective, you know, in, in a very small way, you know, we're trying to think about, OK, well, if, if we need uh, education to be useful to these kind of climate game changers, um, it needs to be three things fundamentally. So firstly, it needs to be interdisciplinary focused. Uh, we started off as an institute just bringing together people from different scientific dis disciplines to collaborate for social impact. Um, we need more opportunities for activists uh, across the domain in, in climate action to see different approaches to climate solutions. Um, I think with this, obviously, then naturally comes um, building the tools and skills around uh, collaboration and collective intelligence, um, these soft skills that are so, so critical, I think, to any activist or game changer to make, to make real change. 
I think secondly, um, you know, it has to be uh, an experiential education can be incredibly useful to uh, to a climate activist or to really make uh, action. Um, really practicing, um, you know, learning by doing, finding real um, solutions in the education system that can be implemented uh, immediately. I think this is, you know, we've seen this through, you know, members of the call, through climate science, through scouts, that there is tremendous uh, ability to build, have, have really powerful learning experiences, educational experiences through just getting into action um, very quickly. Uh, and so this is definitely the case for us as we're trying to build and, and bring together a wider alliance of, of education organizations united in, in education transformation into this um, climate education coalition. I think it's absolutely crucial bringing those that are just mobilized through using learning um, in action very quickly. And then just lastly, um, I think education that is very driven to um, being teacher and student and civil society in regular interaction is absolutely crucial to trigger action. Um, this is, I mean, this is what was mentioned by, by yourselves at EcoHouse Global, how you can build community and education, not just um, that is from the teachers themselves, but through generated by civil society too. Um, and I think broadly, you know, in this conversation around climate action, I think we've learned from a lot of the research, forums, uh, COP as well, that often, uh, kind of a missing constituency to really transforming these education systems and supporting climate actors are, are the schools themselves that are really producing the knowledge. And so I think we really want to push and encourage and build uh, coalitions of teachers that are creating some incredible work around uh, climate education to come into the coalition as well. And, uh, and I think fundamentally, if we can get this interdisciplinary education, experiential education, and then really this uh, a collection of collaboration from teachers, students and civil society. I think we can really provide the tools um, for the game changers to really, you know, actually change the rules uh, of this climate game and, and, and help us find solutions collectively. I totally agree, Ed. And I think that's a moment to, <laughs> to reach out to the Education International Teachers Unions a blink of an eye and tell them, we're waiting <laughs> to collaborate. Um, as you said, climate education is about building uh, some kind of mindset in people. Uh, for me, it's building values in people. And um, we have the representative of the World Organization of the Scout Movement, Hannah, here. Uh, for me personally, um, scouts, in my country particularly, it's been always about the values too. And um, I would like to ask you about that. What are the values that climate education built uh, or should build in the young generations? And also, if you could tell us more about what um, World Scout Movement is doing for climate education. Of course. Thanks, Johnny. Yeah, at the Scouts, we believe, you know, all young people shouldn't just receive climate education, but they actually have a right to climate education as well. Um, and we, we represent young people in 172 countries in the world. There's not many countries that don't have Scouts now, um, but that's learning through non-formal education in nature. And in lots of countries, Scouting is built into schooling. Um, so they learn as part of a school timetable, which actually really helps to increase the knowledge of climate education in the curriculum for young people, hand in hand with their outdoor environment. But for many, many other countries around the world, you know, young people are actively making that choice to join the Scouts in order to learn about the world around them because they just can't receive that sort of education in school. So we've worked, to work, worked towards the SDGs long before 2015 and we'll continue to do so long after 2030. And climate literacy really, really builds those skills and values in young people, helps to build really valuable skills, resilience first and foremost, care for the communities around them and a real global outlook for those in need as well. It opens up young people's eyes and minds to the realities of the world and awakes them to achieve a world with more justice, equity and human rights for all. And it gives young people the opportunity and skills to reflect and share their own points of view and play an active role within a global and interconnected society. We provide funding for young people to take action in their local community and speak out on global levels like at COP27, for example. 
It also helps them to understand and discuss the, com the complex relationships between social and ecological problems. You know, we can't have climate justice without human rights and social justice, for example. Common political and economic issues and develop new ways of thinking and acting. And fundamental to all of our non-formal education programming at Scouts is protection of the environment and engagement with nature. Every program we run, no matter what the topic, always has an element of the outdoors and nature inside it. For Scouts, nature is their classroom. Scouts adore the outdoors and because of that, they're committed to protecting it. So we joined the Climate Education Coalition to really bring climate education to more young people across the world those countries that we're not reaching, but also to work with others uh, who have common goals. Uh, we want to promote the benefits of climate education to decision makers and ensure there's a standardization of climate education across the world and no young people are left behind. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hannah. And well, as we're talking, we're talking about a youth mostly, where we are the youth and from my own experience in climate education before I joined Earth Day, I haven't been educating as you did. I did something else. I was um, pushing the governments to introduce climate education to the curricula. Um, I was doing that in Poland, but I also had a privilege to do so with uh, activists from the Fridays for Future and to do so in Europe and also globally. And I would like to invite uh, our last speaker, which uh, I had a privilege to work with, uh, Eva Papinolaki from uh, Greece. And I would like to ask you, Eva, how you've, based on our example and your example, how you can influence the ministers of education in their countries and the United Nations in order to prioritize climate education, but primary in order to really introduce climate education to the national curricula. Thank you, Johnny. I think this is a question we ask ourselves every single day. Youth is the biggest stakeholder group when it comes to education in general and hence in climate education. Not only because there are the majority of people that are in formal educational systems right now, but also since we refer to climate change, we are going to face its consequences very soon. We already do. Actually, it is our generation that will, it's going to face more severe and chaotic climate consequences. However, being a key stakeholder group is not always a guarantee of influence among political leaders. So I want to speak practically. Youth have to use certain tools in climate education and advocacy. We have to be organized and strategic. I will refer only to three of these tools. Emotion, social media, and forming coalitions. When these three are not used independently but combined, we can achieve actual political influence. Starting with emotions, we all know that the main way of convincing someone to do something is to make them feel something about it. Youth, by default, we experience stronger emotions in our age than other age groups. And I strongly believe that the rage of Greta was the key thing that rallied the climate movements and the passion of young people can actually influence political decisions. Moving to social media is another advantage of our age. Politicals do, politicians do really care for their public image, from my experience at least, and hence youth-led social media campaigns very often actually reach high-level politicians like UN officials. Moreover, these platforms can reach lots of people that are voters, can reach the general public and, you know, gain like everyday people support which is very very important the last tool i want to point out is practically what we are doing right now we are here as part of a coalition a very important one numerous organizations from civil society gathered their forces and officially we asked the ministers of education and the un to prioritize climate education 
This time, the youth months rely around 200 organizations, must cooperate with experts and other age groups, and have multiple social media campaigns about it. We must use our passion for a common goal, and I really believe in these coalitions, and I hope this second letter will find the appreciation of the COP presidency. Thank you, Eva. I totally agree. I, when you were speaking about the feelings, I remember this quote from Maya Angelou, that people can forget what you told them, people can forget what you showed them, but you will never, they will never forget uh, how you made them feel. And I think that really climate education is about building this mindset within human beings, which is, which is really based on feelings towards the environment, I think. And, and also more practically saying on our total dependence on the environment. We are, we think we are independent, but we're not, we're part of it. And, and I think that that is the core of what we all are trying to, to tell our societies. Um, I would like to thank you all for this panel. Uh, you've, you've really said very inspiring things. And I'm very happy that we are together on the way towards COP28. I think that with uh, such incredible people as you here and with the other members of the coalition, uh, we will influence COP28 agenda. And I, I really, I bet uh, we will in, in, you know, encourage uh, particular ministers of education uh, to introduce climate education to the curricula. Odds are on our side this year and we should use them as much as we can. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Eva. Um, thank you, Anjola, for uh, reading. And thank you, Stacy, for reading our open letter. Um, I would like to invite all people watching to uh, sign the open letter on the earthday.org website. Uh, also, if you want to join the coalition, uh, you can email us at climateeducationcoalition at gmail.com and we will respond if you want to join the climate education climate education coalition be part of transforming the education uh once again i would like to call the cop 28 presidency on behalf of all members of the climate education coalition that we are really pushing and inviting you the presidency to collaborate with us uh because we want to change the agenda together we're not just demanding we're ready to cooperate with professionals as uh, my fellow speakers here uh, i also would like to thank uh, people who are uh, behind uh, our events here i would like to thank sofia valentino and Catherine bruhalski from earthday.org for managing this uh, incredible uh, panel and the launch of the open letter I would like to thank you very much um, and well I would like to invite our our watchers once again to follow the climate education coalition next steps and to promote this uh, event to promote the open letter to share it with your partners with your stakeholders um, that will be really helpful to achieve this goal, which is prioritizing climate education on the international climate agenda. Well, I'm not only betting we can do it. I know we can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody.